Now, when you're adding and subtracting polynomials, what's the rule? Okay, by the way, this is not on this sheet, but it probably will be on the test. You guys remember when you had like this and they said, what kind of polynomial is it? Usually it gives you a list of the directions. What kind of polynomial is that? Binomial. There was a monomial with one term. Usually in the directions it gives you the options. Binomial for two terms. The terms are separated by pluses and minuses. Trinomial, and then if it was more than four, it was just some other, it's just a polynomial. Okay, also if there was like a shh, dividing by y, this is not a polynomial. Or if it said like a negative exponent, this is not a polynomial, because that's like dividing by y. So you cannot have any uh, dividing by any variables. This would be a polynomial, but uh, like this would not be whatever the letter is. That is not a polynomial. Okay, so you, you can only add and subtract like terms. Go ahead, Jesse, what would number one be? Um, so you divvy it up, one minus six is negative five. And yep. negative five B minus six B is negative 11 B. Right. Yeah, it's kind of like negative five B plus negative six B. So it'd be negative 11, 11 B. And those don't mix. So it's negative five minus 11 B. Does the order matter? No. No. Negative 11b minus 5 would be the same thing. Uh, I do want to do a minus problem. So let's... I guess 10 isn't even in it. I couldn't fit it in there. Um, so, Abby, do you know what to do on number 3? Well, you want to subtract all the like terms. So you would do 8a cubed minus 2a cubed. What would that be? Um, it would be 6a cubed. Yes. And let's see, what else? Um, is the minus 1 going to mix with anything? No. Uh, I like to put them in order. That's what the book usually does. So the minus 1 would go last. So does the negative 7a squared go with anything? Uh, yeah, the negative 3a Yeah, but here's where probably a lot of us would miss, mix it, miss it, because it's negative 7a squared minus negative 3a squared. You guys see where I'm getting at? Yeah. It's negative 7a squared minus, because of that minus on the parentheses. When you have a subtraction on the parentheses, that means you're supposed to subtract everything in the parentheses. But if you're subtracting a negative, um, that's actually a plus. So this is like negative 7 plus 3. So that would be negative 4 a squared. What should we do? Five, seven, or nine? nine. Lauren wants to do nine because that's the challenging one. It's okay, Lauren. You can do it, Lauren. All right, Lauren, let's try number nine. So the largest power that I see is x to the fourth. Let's start with that one. So I see a plus six x to the fourth, plus minus two x to the fourth, and plus minus two x to the fourth. So, Lauren, how many x to the fourth do we have? Three. Close. Six minus two is six minus two minus two. Yeah. So we have two x to the fourth. Basically, a six, a minus two, and a minus two. So that makes two. All right. What do we got in x cubed? X to the third. We have 6x cubed, and I see another one. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong problem. You're right. Did I screw up on the first part, too? No. The first part was right? Yeah. All right. Okay, we got 4x to the cubed. Yeah, you're right. That one's by itself, right? So 
We'll just copy down 4x cubed. It's minus 5? No, it's positive. Number 9? Yeah, 4x cubed. Do you have negative 4x for the second? It's a negative. Negative 4x cubed? Wait, are you looking at number 9? You're looking at 4x squared. Oh, yeah, it's 4x squared. <laughs> Did the same thing, didn't you? All right. Um, yeah, she, uh, Lauren said there's only... Uh, there's only negative 4x squared on the x squared. Okay, then what, Lauren? Anything else? And the part of 1 and the part of 1 is Right. Right. Plus one minus one plus seven. Plus one minus one kind of cancels out. So this is plus seven. All right. All right. Ten isn't even, by the way. Number eleven, Devin. What kind of problem is eleven? Um, it's a distribute. Distribute. Good job, so what is, by distribute, you means multiply both terms by 6b squared. So what is 6b squared times 6b? It doesn't mix. That's for adding. With multiplying, it does mix. And would you uh, make it 6b uh, Close. b squared times b is b to the third, yes. That's, we kind of did that on Friday. When you're multiplying b squared times b, you add the exponent, it is b to the third, but you also have to do 6 times 6. And that would be 36. So the first term is 36b cubed. And then negative 6 would be negative 1b cubed? We're not dividing, we're multiplying. And so 6 times negative 6. And the, yeah, the b squared on the, still, still there. 6b squared times negative 6 is negative 36b squared. All right. Um, let's see. James, how do you do n minus 7 squared? Um, so if you would um, multiply the two ends together. Foil it. It's a foil problem. N minus seven means n minus n minus seven squared means that times itself. Okay, you cannot just square that and square that. That's kind of you get. <clears throat> last week on Friday we had stuff like this. If it's just one term, you can just square that and square that. But if it's two separate terms, you can't because like all. All of this needs multiplied by all of this, so it's a foil problem. You would foil the n's to get n squared. Yeah, foil stood for, it's been a while since we've done this. I think you guys are, for the most part, pretty good at this. F stands for first. The first two are n and n. O stands for outside, so negative 7 and n. I stands for inside, negative 7, and, and L stands for last, negative 7 times negative 7. So basically it's a double distribute. N gets multiplied on both of these, negative 7 gets multiplied on both of those. Okay, what do we got? So you get N squared minus 7N, um, minus 7N plus 49. Yeah, negative 7 times negative 7. If people do miss it, it's usually the last one. Negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. And then we call it n squared minus 14 plus 49. Yeah. So those two are like terms they add together. After you multiply, you can add your like terms together. Good job, James. You're not saying my names. <laughs> are you? Do you, are, do you have to take the final? Yeah. 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 The toilet. Yeah. Uh, the toilet. Yeah. Final. Yeah. 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 Ye
So all <laughs> white. So all easy. Yeah. That was all your fault, James. I got pushed. Why were there ten guys in the bathroom in the first place? Still. Dude, I was. It was Why? Me and John were uh, away, so we didn't know. Yeah. If you guys knew what was happening, you would You would have definitely been in there. No. I don't yes, like, you I don't like going to the bathroom in the bathroom. No, definitely. You would have been in there. No. I don't like getting harassed every time. I know two people that would have been in there and said, no. You and AJ both. I get pushed into the urine. AJ would have been in there. I'm surprised AJ wasn't in there. I wish I was down That's just the only reason why. Yeah. Alright, so number 15 is also a foil problem, right? So, yeah, just do that on 15. Uh, 17 is not a foil problem. What's different about 17? Alright, boys. Stop. Actually. Does anybody want to sit at the back table? There's an extra spot. Leave Wyatt. Wyatt. Devin, I can't move you. You're, you're a risk factor. All right, Jesse. Wow. See, Devin, yeah, you're Jesse. a risk factor. Wow. Everyone slide down. I'm never a risk factor. Yeah, you guys can scooch down now. I never can. Make her. Okay, we did a few of these. This is probably about as hard as this chapter. Well, actually, we did division this chapter. That was the hardest thing. But this is the hardest multiply we did. Does anybody remember how we did this? Yeah. It's distribute. No. So it's bigger than a foil because there's three terms over here. But you have to double distribute. 3x times everything and 3 times everything. You could also do this times these and this times these and this times these. That would also work. But you just got to make sure everything gets multiplied. So, Kenton, what would I get if I multiplied all those by 3x? So just go down the list. 3x times all those. 3 x plus 3x times 7x squared. Yep. Alright, keep going. Okay, so we just finished that one. So that's kind of done. Now you do three times all those. Right, 21x squared. Now I could put that over here, but you guys remember where I put it when I did it? I put it under this one. Because we're gonna have to add like terms, so. All right, go ahead. So when you do it like this, it makes it a little easier to see. These are the like terms, so they will add together. 21x cubed is kind of by itself. examples. 17 was a hard one on that one. So 19 is distribute, just like number 11, and 21 is another foil. Alright. Chapter 11, probably the hardest one we did. I don't know, you guys think chapter 11 or 12 was harder? 11. Wait, 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 this is chapter 10. Chapter 11 was square roots, and well, they weren't all radicals. That was chapter 11. That was pretty hard, I guess. 
Okay, number one factor, hint, take out the GCF, the grace column factor. So I call this take stuff out on number one. There's three kinds of factoring that we learned. And one through eight, this is the first kind of factoring we learned. Case, do you remember how to take stuff out? You take 5x squared out. And then parentheses, that would give you x to the x cubed. Then minus, minus 6. Yeah, minus 6. All right, that's right. Um, yeah, so what do 5 and 30, what can go, both go into those? Uh, the answer is 5. So this is what we can divide them both by. What can we divide x to the fifth and x squared by? x squared. Basically, whoever has the least. Uh, they both at least have x squared. So that's what you can take out. And it's kind of like reverse distribute because you're, instead of multiplying it together, you're dividing it out. So this is what he did. He did this divided by 5x squared. That's where he got x cubed. And he did this divided by 5x squared. That's where he got minus 6. Okay. And by the way, if you did it right, how can you check it? If you put it back together, if you distribute, it should go back to that. All right, uh, let's do another one. That was so fun, we'll do another. Which one should we do, three, five, or seven? Nine, not five. No. Okay, we'll do five, that's fine. Rick wants to do five, right, right. What can multiply into 4 that can also multiply into 20? So what can multiply? Factors of 4 are like 1 times 4 and 2 times 2, right? Factors of 20 are 1 times 20, 2, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. So what's the biggest thing that can multiply into both of those? A lot of times it's one of the numbers itself. So like four can go into four and it can go into 20. And that's the biggest thing we can take out. Four is the biggest thing that can go into four at all, right? So we can take out a four. Okay, how many A's can we take out? They, got, they both have at least five. So that means you can take five out. How many B's can we take out? Four. Okay, what's left if we take this out of both of those terms? So in other words, if we divide this term by 4a to the 5th b, and we divide this term by, oh, so it's b fourth, a to the 5th, b to the 4th. Five a to the fourth b plus one. Yeah, and a lot of times people would just put like nothing on this, but anything divided by itself is one. It's never a never a zero on that. All right. 
great. So number nine, this is, uh, these are three terms factoring. It's got an A squared and A and just a constant. We did these the most probably. Uh, Owen, you remember how to do these? Yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna clear your throat. <clears throat> la la la. Uh, it's okay, Owen. I talk all day long there. It happens a lot to me. Um, okay, do you guys remember how these work? Okay, we, uh, it's reverse foiling, but if it's three term factoring, so for the front, what goes into A squared? A times A. We did this, we did this chapter 12 too, that's pretty recent, we've done some of these. In chapter 12, the difference was we weren't just factoring, we were solving an equation. You guys remember? We factored this and then it's kind of like number three off that last test, something like that. Um, for the back, it's what multiplies into negative six. That also adds up to negative five. Yeah, some of you might say three and two. Right, and if, well, this does add up to negative five, but what's the problem with this? It doesn't, add up to negative. it doesn't multiply to negative six, it multiplies to positive six. So this one's a little bit of a trick question. You do have to use negative six and one, because these two multiply to negative six, and they add up to negative five. So it's negative six and one. Now, this is not a, ch this is a chapter 10 question, but on chapter 12, it looked more like this. And what was the answer in chapter 12? Six and negative one. So not only did we factor sometimes, but we had to say, what values of A make this equal zero? What would we put in for A to make this equal zero? What minus six equals zero? So then the answer would be six. And the answer on this one would be negative one. Just do the opposites. And that's for chapter 12. That's for chapter 12. What's the difference? There was an equal sign, and it says solve. For, on chapter 10, there was no equal sign, it just said factor. So the actual answer for this page is that. But anyway, like I said, we're not gonna review chapter 12 again, so you guys, that was my review basically. Do you still let me know? Um, by the way, remember you can use page notes. This might be a good note for chapter 12, quadratic formula. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, 13. I don't know why I put 10. 13 is the harder version. Okay, does anybody know why this one is harder than number 9? Yeah, when there's a number on the front, that kind of makes things a little more complicated. So, it. The steps are pretty close to what we just did, but for the front, uh, Miranda, it would be what goes into 10 R squared. So what can multiply into 10? Two and five. Two and five. And it still has an R squared there, so you do like two R and five R. Now, possibly it could be what else? One. Could be one and 10. I would try the numbers more in the middle first, like two and five, but occasionally it was like one and 10. Uh, in this case, yeah, it looks like it will be. But let's keep going like we don't know it yet. So 
for the back, what multiplies into one? You're, you're not saying that adds up to negative 11. You're just saying on this version, what multiplies into one? So what, what can multiply into one? What times what equals one? One times one. So here's the problem though. If I put one and one, or even if I put negative one and negative one, the way you check it is you FOIL, but really you only have to do outside inside of the FOIL. And see, that should give you the middle term if it's right. So right now we got negative 2R minus 5R when we FOIL outside inside, which would add up to negative 7R, not this. Oh, I know what we need. Now, we could try different multiples, different factors of one but there's nothing else that goes into one. So that means one and one aren't the problem, it's the two and the five. So this one is, looks like it is gonna be the 10 and one version. So now when we FOIL, by the way, if I had put pluses right here, I would've got 10R plus one R which is 11R, which is almost what I want, but it's positive instead of negative. So if you get the right number, but the opposite, you just need to switch your plus and minus. Okay. I'm gonna ask this again for chapter 12 sake. Let's say there was also like a 2R out here for some reason. You have to solve it for the R's. Okay, what R values would make this equal zero? One. 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 Uh, uh, wait, no. One tenth. One tenth. And zero. And zero. And zero. <laughs> okay, but that's not the answer on this one. Okay, that was easy. Oh, wait. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay, number 17 says, I'm on the back page. Uh, take something out first. Hint. So, if it says take something out first, there he's kind of telling us, or she, whoever wrote this, um, that we're going to take something out first and then probably factor again after that. So, uh, Moses, what can we take out on 17? Two. Two? Yeah, that looks like it's it. Um, if you have like an 82 and 80, they're only two apart, that means... I don't know if it's helpful. That means the biggest thing we could take out is actually a two. And only two apart. So if I, here, let me write this down actually. Yeah, if they're all even numbers, you know two can come out. So. When, after 2 comes out, you divide all these by 2. And then usually what's in parentheses will probably factor again. Alright, so Moses, what might go in the front of this one? 5 and 2. Maybe 5x and 2x. And what might go in the back? Okay, might be eight and five. On this, in this case, the order matters because putting something with five x is different than putting it with two x. So it could be eight and five, five and eight, four and ten, ten and four. Uh, it could be negatives. Everything negative because that would still multiply it, but that would not add up to a positive forty-one. So. Uh, could be 2 and 20, could be 40 and 1, lots of options, alright, 
I would definitely probably start with eight and five though. Five and eight. Or all right, let's see if it works. Eight and five. How do I check? Outside, inside. Outside is stop. AJ, I know it's you. It's not funny. Outside is 25x, inside is 16x. And that does work. Uh, what can we take out of 19? 44. Yeah. 44, 24, 40. Yeah, 4 goes in all those. I know. Okay, number 21. Uh, different of two squares. I think he meant to say, or she, difference of two squares. I called them square minus a square. You guys remember how these work? Let me do an example on this. Before I do 21. So, what is a square minus a square? A square is something that has a nice square root. So, what's the square root of this first term? 3x. Square root means what times itself equals that. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of x squared is x. Um, square root of 9x squared is 3x. Because this times itself would equal that. What's the square root of 4? Two. 2. So it's this would be 3x minus 2 and 3x plus 2. One of each. Okay. It only works if this is a minus and these are both squares. All right. So given that... Uh, Brianna, do you know what the square root of this is? Yeah, two. Two. So this will be 2v. And you remember the square root of this one? Five. So it'll be plus five and minus five. That's it. Those are kind of, if you know what to do, those are easy, the easy ones. All right. Okay, 25 and 27, he says him, perfect squares. Uh, that just means the two parentheses will come out the same. But it, it's following the same rules as three-term factoring. You guys can tell it's three terms. So, 25. Uh, so, Mallory, what... Three term factor, nothing comes out of all three of these, by the way, right? Nothing goes into nine that goes into four. Taking a one out is like doing nothing, so that doesn't count. Uh, Mallory, what might go in the front on this one? What can go into nine k squared? Yeah, 3K and 3K. What could go in the back? What goes into four? Four and one. Four and one. Okay. If we foil outside inside, does that work? That'd be 12K plus 3K, 15K. Well, one problem is we're getting positive 15K. We want negative, so I should have used negatives. But also it adds up to 15K, which is not right. So what else goes into four? Two and two. Two and two. Okay, I should probably use negatives because I want it to add up to negative 12K. So the outside is negative six. The inside is negative six. And that adds up to negative 12K. So that one is right. So this is what he meant by hint perfect squares. That means it's something so squared. It's the same thing that we did before. Yeah. There's not really you don't really need any special knowledge to do those. 
It's just a repeat of like the second section basically, or third section. But it's going to come out kind of nice, symmetrical. Looks the same. 